So you want to rip your Blu-ray discs and you're not sure, should you choose to store your content as ISO files or MKV files? So I've done quite a bit of content on the channel about ripping your uh, movies and, and such from your physical Blu-rays, uh, HD and 4K Blu-rays, putting them on a local server and different elements of that process how to do it, why you might want to do it, why you might not want to do it. And there was a, a comment question about what's the preferable format for what you want to rip to. Specifically, should you choose ISO files or should you choose MKB files? So let's talk about what those are, some of the pros and cons and characteristics, and I'll talk about why, uh, what I choose for my own server and why. So first off, what are they? Well, an ISO file, an ISO file is basically a disk image file. It's a single container that contains an exact copy of everything that resides on that shiny disk. No changing it, no restructuring it, no remuxing it, just a straight up transplant of all that information packed in the same type of structure, mastering and, and, and elements and all of that internally as on the disk itself. An MKV file, on the other hand, is a representation of a specific, say, video and audio stream combination taken off of that disc. So the better explanation that I could give is that a disc contains a whole bunch of stuff on it. It has your movie, but it also has your menu system for when you put that disc in a player. It has trailers and advertisements probably on it. It has maybe the special feature content pieces or video snippets or the still images all of that extra stuff that go that is on your disk it is kept when you make an iso file but when you make an mkv generally speaking we're talking about taking just the main movie element out of that disk package and having that self-contained in its own remuxed separate type of file so what does that mean in terms of some specific logistics well what it means is if you're making an ISO file, you have a file that represents the entire size of whatever was put on that disk. And if you look at like a 4K Blu-ray, generally speaking, you might have a 66 gigabyte disk or a 100 gigabyte disk if you're lucky and they put a little more bitrate in oomph or longer film. But when you make an ISO file, you're, you have everything, including maybe a bunch of stuff that you may not really have a use for or want. Who wants the warnings in the trailers most likely you might not care about the special feature content and material that might be on there. You might only want one cut of the movie and there could be multiples on that image. And of course, on a disc, a movie is going to have probably a handful of different languages. All that audio takes up space. Just as a baseline, I would say if, if, if you had a 4K Blu-ray disc that was a 66 gigabyte disc and it was full, full of content, full of material, full of the special features and all the stuff that might be on there and you did an MKV remux of the same film off of that disc, I would venture to say that in, in a lot of cases, your main movie is probably clocking in somewhere around 45 gigabytes, 45, 50 gigabytes. So all in all, I would call it, a, it's, a, it's a good 20% reduction, maybe more, between cutting out the cruft and storing just the main movie in an MKV or keeping the entire ISO. And if you have a lot of movies, that starts to add up to a lot of storage space. Another big difference between them is when you actually go back to play those ripped files. Let's assume that you're playing your ISO file on a player that's trying to emulate the playback of putting that disc you know, physically in a Blu-ray player itself. Well, every disc, as we know, FBI warnings, forced trailers, advertisements, navigate the menus. You have to get through all of that stuff. And an ISO file and, generally speaking, a, a playback player or software, hardware, whatever it might be, that's going to play that ISO file is going to try to replicate that experience and you're stuck going through all of that disk cruft. When you have an MKV file and you're using a piece of software or a player you know, or, or a device to play that back over your local network, you now circumvent all of that stuff. There are no more warnings. There are no more forced trailers. You get right into the movie, immediate playback, nothing to wait for, nothing forced on you, and nothing to skip. So that's a pretty significant difference between the playback experience between you know choosing one of those file formats over the other and the nice thing about an mkv file is you can still retain the, the the most important stuff for you obviously it keeps the video stream for the movie you can also then keep the audio stream of your choice to go with it you can keep the subtitles either all of them if you really want to or just the forced ones that you may need 
for when the aliens talk or there might be a foreign a foreign language section of a film. And you can even still have multiple audio tracks in an MKB file. So if you want to retain the higher quality uh, movie soundtrack and then still also keep the commentary, you can do that. And MKB can pack all that stuff together and most players will allow you to kind of easily select or switch between subtitle streams or audio streams to get the one that you want. But the thing about that playback with an ISO file is that really the only devices that are truly going to give you a fully reliable licensed Blu-ray playback engine are Blu-ray players. So your Zipedes, your Dunes, your Zedus, and other pieces of software in, in that, that are out there that will play ISO files and advertise full menu playback and all of that, well, they really try and it's not going to be as reliable as a disc player. Honestly, it's, it's just not. And that's not to throw shade on any of those companies developing those players and the software and all of that that goes with them. They're doing a pretty amazing thing, like basically building these playback engines and, and making them work. And in many cases, I, they, I would expect they probably do work pretty flawlessly. But the worst thing that happens, I think, when you, you set up a whole bunch of home theater equipment and you sit down and watch a movie and you got failure modes that stop you from enjoying a piece of content. And it's compounded that much more of a stressful situation when you're trying to do it with your family or maybe you've got some friends over and you know you rip that movie, you're all, you're all fired up to watch it and your, your player can't handle the, the menu structure of that specific disc. I guarantee it happens. The only players that are guaranteed to give you flawless playback are fully licensed like Blu-ray engine devices and those are the actual disc spinners themselves. Everything else is kind of a, a side reverse engineered custom player and they've gotten much better over time again so credit where credit's due but there's a difference. MKV on the other hand you can find so many different players uh, hardware and software that are very, very well capable of playing MKV files that you really don't see the, the level of failure mode the, the support it, it's just so wide that, that there's a pretty significant accessibility difference there. If you're going to choose ISO, you really have to consider all steps of, of I think, your, your playback stack and your process more deliberately, understanding how are you going to get menu playback, what are you, going to ch what are you, what are you choosing to playback with, and you're going to have a whole lot smaller uh, of a set of choices. And even if you look at some of the really popular software elements and stuff of these DIY ripping solutions like Plex, Plex doesn't support ISO files. So in terms of a couple points that I would call kind of even in the comparison, something that I like is that either format an ISO or an MKV still gives you a single file. It's one file to manage on my server. If I need to copy it, move it, I wanna restructure how I have things stored in my folders. I will say there is an alternative way to rip a full disk copy. Uh, into what we call like a BDMV folder structure. A lot of people like those and that's great. I never really had a preference to using BDMV folders. You're, you're basically taking all of the individual files of the disk and maintaining the structure of all of those many files in all of the folders of that disk off of like one root folder that you then need to copy and move and manage. To me, it's just safer, simpler, and better in my opinion to always just have one single large file that represents your one specific movie. And so that, that's a wash from an ISO to an MKV. The other probably most important thing, honestly, to point out, and I think a point of misunderstanding a bit, is the fact that an MKV, which is a straight ripping or remuxing or you know pulling of the contents from a disc, is bit for bit the exact same quality as the disc itself or as the ISO image would be. Making an MKV with popular tools like Make MKV is not re-encoding anything. It's not changing anything. It's basically copying the raw information, the raw data, off of that disk and just putting it in a different type of container that has been purpose-built to store or defined to store that kind of stuff. And so, you know, some people choose to re-encode their content, meaning they take the con they, they take the stuff off the disk and they run it through other programs like Handbrake or other encoders to make it smaller and encode it down. Honestly, I don't know why anybody really takes the time to do that. If you're going to encode your stuff to, to a lower quality and a smaller size, at that point, man, streaming's so good, 
just buy the stuff on iTunes and watch it there. So I would only ever rip one-to-one, -one, bit for bit, off the disc and use the content that way off the disc and, and that's it for me. But if you put that stuff in an ISO or you put that stuff in an MKV bit for bit, there's no difference whatsoever. It's the same thing, no quality difference. So a couple other considerations that I would, uh, that I would keep in mind when kind of like making this choice basically is just the idea that like MKV is kind of the darling file format of this entire c community, this entire process and it has been for a long time. It really kind of is, I would say, the file format of choice has been for a long time for people ripping content, storing it from DVDs to Blu-rays and now 4K Blu-rays as well. So what that means is it's, it's just ubiquitous. You're gonna find so many tools, so many players, so much software that supports MKV, lets you manipulate and do things with your MKV files, plays it back, whether you're on Windows or you're on Mac, all the tools are there. And I think that adds a lot. It's, you can consider it basically a very strong, healthy, active, like well-supported open source kind of file format. And there's a lot of benefit to that with all of the different support options and stuff that are out there. And if you're making MKVs, one of the best resources, one of the best tools, of course, is Make MKV. They have excellent forums for where people are crowdsourcing information and discussing challenges and the right way to do things. The other really major consideration though is the fact that ISO is easy and MKV really takes a good amount of attention and work. So if I'm gonna rip an ISO file, you can grab a piece of software like any DVD HD or, or others, there's a bunch of them that can just basically make your one for one disc image. You put in your disc, you press a button, you wait 45 minutes to an hour and boom, there you go. You've got your file, it's all done. You didn't have to do anything. And as long as your player works properly with that file, you're good to go. But if you wanna make an MKV, you have to take the extra manual steps to make the MKV, which means using a tool like Make MKV to load up the details of the disc that you're trying to rip. It presents you with all the information that's on that disc. You need to be able to select the right movie title you need to be able to get the right audio that you're that you're actually looking to have in your resulting file. You need to manage the subtitles. Yes, a lot of times that's really easy. Often enough though, it's not always that easy. I have a, a variety of, of kind of how-to helper informational videos here on the channel talking about that process and some of the pitfalls. So check out some of the past home theater videos. I think I'll probably set up like a specific media server playlist, collecting them all together as well. So do check out the playlist sections of the channel and you'll find a whole bunch of videos to help you do and execute that specific process. I don't wanna go into the details on that here. I wanna keep this one a little bit higher level, but suffice to say, making MKVs is work and with specific disks and specific situations, it can be a pain and it can be tricky. It even compounds itself too. If you start talking about wanting to rip TV shows, concerts, or, or discs that might have many smaller video segments that you need to manage and keep together versus being able to take just one disc and you're looking to do just movies. There, there, there's ways that it gets, it gets time consuming real quick. I think a lot of people diminish this element of setting up a DIY mini media server. They diminish the amount of time and effort that it takes to really do it and to do it right. So that all said, I've maintained libraries of ripped local media content in, in waves over the years where I've set some stuff up and I kind of segued away from it and I came back to it. And so I've, I've done ISO libraries, I've done MKV libraries. <clears throat> I'm pretty well versed in both of them. When I kind of um, got back into setting up some media, really kind of spurred by the channel and wanting to make content about it, I initially was thinking, I'm gonna go ISO. It's so easy, I can rip. And I rebought myself uh, an OPPO uh, Blu-ray player. I did the jailbreaks and all that stuff on it to be able to play in ISO with menus. And, and then I hit a bunch of some of the same old failure modes and the same old pain points and all of that. So where I'm at ended up right now and what I would say my preference in general is to not go the ISO route, go the MKV route, pay the time cost for all of the other virtuous benefits in the long run of maintaining your files, maintaining your movies and using your library as MKVs. And so I'd say there's four main reasons why that's my preference. Number one reason I choose MKVs 
is because my existing hardware in the devices that I like to use support it very well and it doesn't support ISO very well. So I use Apple TVs. I really like the Infuse app. I have other videos about Infuse. Infuse in the Apple TV works really, really great with MKV files, not so great with ISO files. It doesn't do menu-based playback, basically. Makes MKV a very easy choice. The second reason that I would say I would choose MKVs is just uh, not to be elite or cocky or anything, but, but I know what I'm doing in terms of ripping my content. I understand how to get the right stuff off of my discs. Even when I encounter those challenging, questionable ones that, that are not very clear, what exactly are the right pieces to take off of it. So I feel confident that I know the process pretty well. I know how to navigate ripping workflows. And so it, it's easy for me to say, I can go ahead and do MKVs because I have a good level of confidence that I'm doing it correctly. A third reason that I'm kind of okay, at least at the moment right now, doing MKVs instead of ISOs is that as it is, I spend a lot of time at my computer. <laughs> Most of the time running disks through, it's not a very attentive process. You put a disk in, it takes a couple minutes or, or a little bit to, to, to scan it, make sure, understand what's on that disk. Sometimes you gotta spend a few extra minutes really kind of figuring stuff out. You make the rip, you do some validation, maybe you have to run it through some subtitle verification and all that, so. But for me, just personally, I'm already at my computer a lot. I'm sitting there, but it's accessible for me to be able to run disks as kind of a, a secondary action of what I'm already doing sitting in my office space sitting at my computer and i would say that in reasons that i've gotten out of the diy ripping scene in the past is that i was spending a lot of time like in my evenings time that i i really should be spending doing something else enriching and i just got really really tired of that so the accessibility of doing it as like a secondary action to something else really makes it a lot more tenable for me and so with those first three reasons, the fourth one is simply, I, I have a preference for the, the hardware that I already use. I have the knowledge and I have the time. Why waste the space, right? Storage, it, storage is easy to come by nowadays. We can buy 18, 20 terabyte hard drives for $300 or cheaper than $300. But still, why do you want to throw away 20, 25% of your space? If you end up with, you know, 100 terabytes of storage in a massive movie library, why do you want to throw away 25 terabytes that could be holding, you know, more movies or future movies and all of that? It's just more efficient to not wastefully store a bunch of cruft that, like I personally at least, would never use. I don't need those other audio tracks. I don't want those trailers and advertisements and even special features. I do not rip and keep special features myself. If I want to watch the special features for a film, I'll watch them on the iTunes version. So there you go. A treatise, a thesis about... DIY, media ripping, ISO versus MKV, a whole bunch of different logistics, elements, and details, and some, some rationale about why, about what and why I do what I do. If you have more questions, sound off in the comments. And I welcome everybody. Share your rationales. If, if you have a DIY ripped media setup running, what, what, it, what format are you storing it in and why? What file format? Are you doing bit for bit or are you re-encoding? Share your rationales, share your what's, share your why's so that everybody can kind of read them, get different opinions. I'm sure other people right, have made different decisions for very legitimate and valid reasons for themselves. And so we all learn by sharing our stories together. Otherwise, please do all the regular YouTube stuff. Like, subscribe, hit the bell for notifications. Leave those comments. If you don't share your story, at least you know leave a thanks, leave a thumbs up very much appreciated and if you'd like to support the channel directly and if my content helps you with any of your home theater av electronics and entertainment journey there's super thanks there's amazon affiliate links there's channel memberships and other ways to provide some monetary support so i can do more stuff buy more things and have more stuff to talk about thanks so much for watching coming back for more home theater discussion and fun